busy people getting fit in Fulcher, Texas. Our aim is to help you look better, feel better, and perform better as quickly as possible. I'm your host, Brian White, with Blue Eagle Fitness and Nutrition. Welcome. Hey, what's up, Clancy? Hey, Brian. How are you today? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Um, you have, st- for like the past few weeks, maybe a month or more, uh, you have talked nonstop about your new Aura Ring. You're very happy with it. And so wanted to learn more about you, what your experience has been with an Aura Ring, what an Aura Ring is, fitness ag- or activity trackers in general, because uh, I have quite a bit of experience as well. And we'll turn it over to you. Get started with, uh, tell us what an Aura Ring is and what it has done to your life. Okay, this is my Aura Ring. I got the rose gold. Also, they recommend you wear it on this finger. Okay. I wear mine on this finger. It's just more comfortable. So they recommend uh, wearing it on Mr. Pointer. And you prefer Mr. Top Hat. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And it's got sensors inside of it. So the sensors track a lot of things. The reason I got this is because I was having a lot of pain and inflammation the past year in particular. And I wanted to know, because I'm not a watch person. Okay. And so I wanted to know how my sleep was adding up Okay. because I was not feeling good inside my body. And there was something was going to have to change. Either I was going to have to start doing drugs or I was going to have to learn something useful and healthy to make myself feel better. And so that's why I got the aura ring and it tracks my sleep and among other things, activities, steps, calories, heart rate, variability. Okay. And so, um, how do you wear it 24 hours a day? I do. And the main reason I wanted it was for my sleep to find out how much deep sleep I was getting. Okay. But now I, you know, I wear it all day just even, to get even while working out. Unless it's a barbell, unless I'm using a barbell, then I'll take it off. Yeah. I've, I've had a, an aura ring as well. Um, maybe five years ago, four or five years ago, rose gold was not one of the options. Um, but I, I had an R ring, loved it, loved the data that it gave me, but just like wearing any other metal ring, you know, gripping a pull-up bar or dumbbells, barbells, kettlebells, sleds, <laughs> you know, which is yeah. basically everything that we do in the gym uh, right. was either uncomfortable or unsafe right? We don't, you know, it can literally rip a finger off if it's, if it's uh, the right, if you're putting enough pressure on it. So um, I did, I would not wear my aura ring during while working out, um, unless I was running or biking, you know, then I would, then I would wear it definitely wore it for sleep uh, and through the rest of the day and all my other activities. But you have, what? what is something you have learned? Because I know this is your favorite part of the story. So my favorite, so, okay. Full disclosure, everyone uh, that knows me knows I like to drink a lot of wine. I'm a red wine drinker seven days a week. Doesn't have to be an event. I'm not one of those, oh, I'll just drink at your event. Yeah, the event was every day. <laughs> and <laughs> what I learned is when I got my ring, about six weeks ago, I learned that it was affecting my deep sleep. And that's why my body was not recovering. I was not getting I was getting about 25 minutes a night of deep sleep. And that's not enough to recover a body. That's why I was having pain and, you know, other side effects. And so I was like, huh, let me look at this. And so I stopped drinking. And I thought, well, let's just see what happens. The very first day, my sleep went from 25 minutes to one hour, 11 minutes. (laughs) Yeah. So I was like, huh, I wonder if that was a fluke. Let's try that again. (laughs) And was it a fluke? No. Second night, same thing. So then I said, well, let's try this again. So I had some wine back to 28 minutes of deep sleep. And I was like, okay, this is not worth it. Um, I 
So I said, let's, let's cut this down and get our deep sleep so that we can feel good and recovered. So I just grabbed and, the book, Why We Sleep by Dr. Matthew Walker. Uh, when he was researching, yeah. when he was doing the research for this book, uh, the one change that he made uh, through his research was that he no longer drinks any alcohol. Um, because, it's compelling. Because the, the impact of alcohol on sleep quality um, is amazing. I mean, it, it is uh, just like you said, I mean, you have the data and the data you're experiencing. I know you're just one data point, but the data you experienced, it lines up with all the other data that, you know, was collected for this book, um, which is uh, alcohol significantly reduces the quality of sleep, specifically the amount of deep sleep that you get. And deep sleep is beneficial because... It helps your body recover. That's when our body releases the human growth hormone. Yeah. That's when, you know, this we're able recorded. to. This is Hello. recorded and I posted on YouTube. Okay, that's fine. Hello. This is, welcome to my live. Welcome to our, <laughs> welcome our podcast. To my <laughs> yeah. And so I try to be professional the, until the 15 year old gets home. I love it when the 15 year old comes in. Why not? <laughs> I love this. This is perfect. I love it. <laughs> she notices my big forehead by the way this is real life <laughs> real I, life this is real real life, life. Thank so you. for me i wanted to feel better and that's why i needed deeper sleep because i d simply did not feel well my body hurt everything ached my joints ached my muscles were not recovering i was gaining weight and i was like that's not okay yeah. So as a result, I've lost a few pounds. I've already lost um, a percentage of body fat and I've already recovered. Like my body already feels better in a yeah. couple of weeks. Um, you know, I don't feel like I'm 110 years old and I can't walk. And that's how I was feeling. It was bad. So I love I love this ring. I don't even get money for saying that. <laughs> They're not even paying me. They no, should pay me. They should. But they at any should. rate, it's one. It's been awesome. Okay, very cool. Um, do you do you, do you use the R ring or do you look at the data other than sleep? I I do look at my steps, although I don't really have to worry about that because I easily get, you know, twelve thousand steps a day. Okay, and that's just simply from walking around all over the place and teaching classes. I'm always on my feet. And so, um, again, the, that goes back to the deep sleep. My, I, it was hurting me to be on my feet all day. Okay. You know, and that was another thing that was affected by it. And I was like, this is not worth a couple glasses of wine at night. This is yeah. not what I thought. I thought it was relaxing and I thought it yeah. was a good thing to do. And it turns out, um, it turns out, that I learned a lot. I still have wine every, you know, maybe once a week. Okay. Yeah. That's what, that's so. what I'm doing more or less. Uh, I say more or less, so, you know, with the travel schedules and I mean, first of all, it's difficult for me to drink during the week because I'm at a, I'm at water polo practice, not getting home until bedtime basically. So I get home, um, get ready for bed and then go to bed. I don't, I don't have a lot of time cause we're up so late. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then on the weekend, I, I may have a drink or I may not again, if I'm at a tournament and, you know, <laughs> right. we get home and go straight to bed. Right. Uh, right. Or, but on a, if I'm home, um, then I will probably have a glass or two, um, on the weekends, but I have a, so I've used a Fitbit. That was the first activity tracker that I had. And I had a Fitbit for about five years. And then I had an aura ring. Then I went back to a Fitbit and now I have an Apple watch and I have, I've learned that at least with those three. So the, the Fitbit, the Apple watch and an R ring, the thing that I've learned is that they do a remarkable job of tracking sleep, especially mm -hmm. man, uh, telling me how much deep sleep I've gotten. Um, I've been very pleased with the accuracy uh, of those in, in those tools. And there's lots of research out there that shows that, that 
um, the, the results that you would get with one versus another are very similar, which gives a lot of credence to make to that the data is correct. Um, and it's consistent across people. So uh, when it comes to sleep tracking, these activity trackers do a phenomenal job, of an absolutely phenomenal job, and they're great. Where they are less great, if not just making up random numbers, uh, one is uh, they are terrible at telling you how many calories you have burned. Just terrible. Um, and a lot of that because they don't they don't know you as a person, and they're they're basing it on averages. So for let me give you an example. My my daughter is a is seventeen year old seventeen years old not the one you just met um, she's fifteen the, the, the my older daughter she's seventeen uh, she's a high level she was a state champion two hundred meter swimmer uh, in the freestyle she you put her in the lake and say swim swim a five k and she's like sure great sounds fun you put me in a lake right to swim five hundred yards <laughs> right <laughs> I am going to be expending an enormous amount of energy, <laughs> an enormous amount of energy trying to swim 500 yards. Meanwhile, my second road is like, it's, it's easier than walking. So it is easier than walking for her. Right. So the, a Fitbit um, or an Apple watch or an R ring, they're going to, it will notice slight differences in heart rate. Mine's going to be spiked. Right. And hers will not be. <laughs> Um, but in terms of movement and just in terms of calorie burning, it's going to say that I burned probably a little bit more when the reality is that I burned a lot more. Uh, it's going to give her a lot of credit for burning calories that she is not actually burning because her body has become so efficient, which was the point of training, right? Right. The faster you can run, bike, swim, or the longer that you can do that, and whether whether it's run, bike, swim, or do a CrossFit workout, or do weight lift, I mean, anything, any physical activity, working out in the yard, the more you do it, the more efficient your body becomes at moving you through that movement or event, mm -hmm. whatever it is you're doing. Well, that activity tracker doesn't take any of that into account at all. Right? So I get... Uh, an issue people run into is when they say, Hey, my Fitbit says that I burned an extra 500 calories. And so I get to eat another 500 right. calories. Right. And right. that math, like, might work, work on a spreadsheet, but in real life, you're like, Why don't, why am I not gaining weight or why am I not losing weight? Well, because right. you're not gaining, you're not losing weight because you're overeating and you're overeating because you think you're burning these calories when the reality is um, you're not unfortunately. So I work at a gym with you. And obviously I talk to lots of people who want to lose weight Yeah, and they want to look better. And for me, I wanted to lose a couple pounds and it wasn't enough for me to say, okay, I'll just track my steps and I'll get my whatever steps a day. And, you know, hopefully I'll lose weight or I'll cut calories knowing that my issue is the wine consumption every yeah. day two and three yeah. glasses of wine and if you eat a heavy meal before bed you're th both of those are going to affect your deep sleep so if yes. your goal is to lose so if what i'm saying when my goal was to lose weight it wasn't compelling me to lose weight by Correct. cutting calories that was not compelling enough what compelled me is knowing that I'm getting that deep sleep and now I'm going to recover and now my body's going to feel better. I'm going to be in a better mental frame of mind. Now that compels me to stop drinking the wine and not eating a heavy meal before, which I don't do that, but some people may eat a yeah. lot of food before bed. I, uh, that wasn't my issue. My issue was the three glasses of wine every night. Yeah. So what I'm saying is it wasn't, that didn't compel me. You've got to find the thing that compels you and for me, it was, I want the deep sleep. So I'm going to drop the wine and consequently I will drop some weight. Yeah. And then yeah. that works for me. Yeah. And so I think it's important for people to find what is the thing that's going to compel you. Do you want better sleep? Okay. Well then cut the, cut the heavy meal before bed, you know, eat earlier in the day or eat less at dinner, you know, or don't drink at night. And so these are the things are you're going to get better sleep. 
and you're going to you're going to lose weight naturally because you're cutting out a lot of calories, empty calories. And that's what's happening for me. And that's just a benefit of getting the sleep that I'm getting. These other things are side effects that are wonderful. I'm like, sweet, you know, and I'm not replacing it with like ice cream or cupcakes. I'm not replacing <laughs> it, you know, that I'm is a just, bad replacement. I, I mean, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. And so you're right. People say, Oh, I burned 500. So I can have that bowl of ice cream. No, don't have it, you know, get better sleep and just go to sleep, maybe not feeling as full, you know, and so it works and you're going to feel better, you know? So that's my soapbox speech. (laughs) I see that. I see that. (laughs) Uh, Last, uh, the last thing is back to the, the activity tracker. Um, not all activity trackers track activity the same. So I learned Fitbit really likes it when I do laundry. Like the best way to get steps (laughs) is to do laundry. I'll just tell you right now, folding clothes. If you're trying to get 10,000 steps, steps in quotes, steps on a Fitbit, (laughs) do just fold laundry. I mean, you know, 30 minutes of folding laundry and 2,500 steps later, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you have walked so can so I do far. this? No, I mean I'm this Am I getting just, steps right now? You could, you know, if you were if again, if you had a some like an Apple Watch is a lot less sensitive. Um so mm-hmm. uh I went on I had an Apple Watch, my wife had a Fitbit and we went on a walk, a hike, maybe at a theme park. We might have gone to Six Flags. And she had 12,000 steps. We had done everything side by side. I mean, we, she and I had stuck together that day and let the kids run off and do their thing. She had 12,000 steps. I had 8,000 steps. I mean, it, it was that big of a discrepancy, you yeah. know, 50% discrepancy for two people who'd basically been right beside each other the whole time. And I shared that story at the gym uh, in class and we had a member say, I, I knew it. I knew it <laughs> because she had been wearing the Apple watch and her husband had been wearing the Fitbit and they had gone on a hike. And he had made some snide comments about how uh, she couldn't keep up or she, and she wasn't getting, you know, working hard enough. And, and she said he could prove it again in quotes, prove it because he was, he had 15,000 steps and she only had 10,000 steps. Um, so she was very happy to hear my, hear my story. Well, I think people do get disillusioned though. And they're like, what I burned, you know, 1,382 calories today. Okay. And they're, they're so hung up on that, that it's, it can be disillusioning, especially when you're trying to lose weight and that's your goal. You know, you're fixated on these numbers and they just rule you. Yeah. And I think now that we, is, there's some problems with that. What they can do is they can show you, they, you can, they can be relative, right? So if I have an Apple watch, which is what I'm wearing now, And if it says that yesterday I got 8,000 steps and today I got 9,000 steps, that tells me, that gives me some direction that I moved a little bit more today than I did yesterday, right? And I can work to get that number up, um, you know, and whether your number is 8,000, 9,000, 10,000, 15,000, I'm not here to to split hairs on the number of quote-unquote steps you're getting, but it will tell us how much you're moving in the day. In fact, I care less about the number of steps you're getting in the day, unless you're at below, um, you know, 6,000, you know, it could be 6,000 on an Apple watch or 8,000 on a Fitbit. You know, we, that does say we're probably not moving enough during the day, but I care less about that. And more of, are you moving every hour, right? The, the five or 10 minutes every hour, are we getting up? Are we moving? Are we doing the dishes? Are we folding laundry? Are we, you know, uh, getting up if we're at an office, just getting up and walking and talking to somebody. If we're at home, you know, are we going to just take a, a quick little f- three minute walk in one direction and walk back in three minutes, right? Six minutes just to get some sunshine and out and fresh air, things like that. I care more about that in terms of your health and in terms of you getting the goals you want, losing weight, burning, uh, burning fat, building muscle and feeling better. Right, going especially if we can go outside, feel the breeze on our face and some sunshine on our skin. Those are things that we know that have been proven to help us to feel better overall. Absolutely, I love it. I love it. I I love goals 
that aren't a number related because my whole life I've been fixated on how much I weigh. I could tell you how much I weighed in high school. I could tell you how much I weighed in college. I could tell you how much I weighed last week and it's nuts. And I got to say like being fixated on a number and I just have to get to that number and then I'm going to be happy is wrong thinking. Yeah. Now being fixated on, let me get better sleep and feel better. And how can I do that? Now that's a good yeah. way to go about hitting your goal. Love and so it. that's, what's working for me. So I'm like, I'm, I'm on it now. So very nice. Well, thank you, Clancy. I appreciate thank the you. conversation. All right, Brian, will you have a good rest of your day? Yep. You too. You can get every episode of Busy People Getting Fit wherever you listen to your podcasts or on YouTube. You can also reach us at busypeoplegettingfit.com. Until next time, thank you for listening.